product. We have a new year. Happy new year. New products. <laughs> All right, new products. First up. Yeah. It's a benchiometer. Um, this is an um, Alpha uh, Taiwan right angle 5K linear panel mount potentiometer. I know it's a lot, but we're actually going to carry a bunch of different alpha pots. Um, and this is like the first one of the series. Um, it's a right angle pot. A lot of people use these in stuff like synthesizers and mixers and all kinds of projects. Um, 5K linear, you know, we already have a 1K, 10K, and I think 100K um, linear pots from alpha. Um, so we're just going to add a lot more. So starting with this 5K. Uh, it's a nice little potentiometer. The pin spacing is 0.2 inches. You can use it in a breadboard if you like. It's a very fun pot. Next up, we have what I call the shortest USB-A to USB-C cable. This little thing is handy because it turns anything into a trinky. Um, <laughs> if you have a computer with a USB-A port, plug it aside, and now you can plug a board with a USB-C uh, socket on it into it, and it's like an instant connection because USB-C is reversible. You don't have to worry about like what if the board's upside down because it can always be reversed the other way around. Yeah. So it's kind of a nice little adapter. Um, shown here with handy. a uh, laptop. Yeah, it's a little handy, like trinketifier slash shortest little USB A to C adapter, but I think very handy for dev boards where you want to turn them into a little pluggy thing, yeah. but they don't come with a pluggy thing. All right, and we finally got these in stock. They're here. Yeah. Yeah, we got these, you know what they're called, like a meditation box. It's sometimes a prayer box, machines. Prayer machine, yeah. These are, these are often hacked. People will use the cases or they um, do uh, circuit. Uh, uh, Circuit bending. Circuit bending, thank you. Yeah. Uh, on the, um, I'm trying to say, I even took a photo of the uh, PCB on the inside so you know what you're getting. Or you can meditate to them. Um, yeah. They are kind of cool. We all needed that. Next up. Yeah, we definitely all need that. Um, this will help you relax. Next up, it's the um, CP2102 friend. This is an update basically for our CP2104 friend, which is an update of our FTDI friend. Basically, it's a USB to serial converter chip on a breakout with all the pins on the side broken out. And then on the end is like an FTDI cable end. It's, it's basically this power ground data RTS and uh, CTS combo, like six pin connector, that's often used in dev boards that need a USB serial converter and maybe have a couple control lines, but don't have that built in. So the CP2102N is the next generation after CP2104. And um, we love the CP2104. It's a wonderful two megabit per second USB serial converter from Scilabs. We use it in dozens of boards. However, I know you're about to hear is we can't really get any more CP2104s. They're um, proving very difficult to find in the shortage. Um, but we have been able to get CP2102s. And so they're almost but not quite pin compatible. Um, and for that reason, we wanted to start with making a breakout because this is USB-C. Um, one thing that's different is that it does have um, up to three megabit per second, not two megabit per second. So it can go a little bit faster than the CP2104. Um, the onboard E prom can be reprogrammed, uh, whereas on the CP2104, it's a one-time programmable. So there, there is a purpose for having two different breakouts for this board, but basically we're kind of trying to get this out to um, have an option for people who can't get the CP2104 and also to um, experiment with this chip before we do a swap out of all of our other breakout boards from the four to the two. That said, it's a perfectly fine FTDI uh, replacement, and it's got USB-C, uh, RX and TX LEDs. It's got all the pins broken out, so if you need all those, you know, weirdo um, uh, modem control lines like Ring or um, DTR or uh, uh, let's see what else, DCD, you know, you need those pins, this breakout has them. All right, next up. Next up is 
Um, by request, a lot of people asked us to make a MCP 23017 breakout. Now we carry the chip for the MCP 23017 and, and honestly, I've just been using the chip all this time, but I do see the benefit of having a breakout where, you know, the pull-ups are set up for you and there's the capacitors and, you know, everything's kind of aligned uh, quite nicely. So this little breakout has an MCP 23017. It's a 16 channel GPIO expander. Um, that you can control over I squared C. So it has 16 GPIO labeled A0 through A7, B0 through B7, and each one can be an output, and it can drive or sync 25 milliamps of current, so it's good for LEDs and stuff like that. It can also be inputs, uh, and the inputs can have pull-ups enabled. So good for buttons as well. So it's kind of like a nice general purpose GPIO expander. The nice thing about the MCP 23017 is it's like kind of old, like it's a well-established known chip. There's drivers for it all over the place. It's used so often. Um, and this breakout is STEMIQT compatible, so you can plug it into I2C very easily. On the bottom are three I2C address jumpers, and so you can have up to eight of these on one bus. They use, I think, address 20, OX20 uh, through OX27. It's got lots of GPIO, but it's it's a nice, just reliable, non-weird GPIO expander. A lot of GPIO expanders have some weird thing going on. This one does not. It's really normal. So it's a it's a nice, easy 16 GPIO plug and play with I squared C. All right, next up, Big Gill, Star of the Show tonight. Besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our community, our customers. Everyone hanging out in the chat tonight is da, 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 da. Da, da, the first, the last product we manufactured in 2021, and the first product um, we're releasing out of 2022 oh, wow. is the ESP32 S2 TFT Feather. Um, so we basically took a 1.14 inch color TFT display and slapped it onto our Feather ESP32 S2 to give you a Wi-Fi microcontroller board based on the ESP32 S2 with native USB, two uh, megabytes of PS RAM, four megabytes of flash. So it's got a lot of capability, a lot of speed, and it's got this color TFT display. And um, you can see I also have a little NeoPixel up top and a STEM IQT port, so you can plug and play I squared C, oh. uh, reset and boot button. Um, it's went through a couple different redesigns due to part shortages and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you want something that's just ready to go and has a display, um, you can even use the, you know, the boot button as an input. So it, you, know, you might be able to do even some simple projects that just need like one button um, and a display and, and I squared C, you know, plug for external sensors or to the overhead. expanders. Yeah, let me see if this um, demo comes up. Okay, so here you go. So the demo, I will say it's like, oh, you have a battery. I don't have a bat, the, the um, there's a battery monitoring chip. Hold on. So oh, and, it, it oh, and you have it plugged into a, an actual plug thing. Now I know, yeah. There you go. Do that. Okay, that's nice and sharp. Um, oh, no. What Hold happened? on. I think I pressed something. Hold on. Live demo. Could be my fault because I, um, I had moved the power supply over there. I think, yeah. Sorry about that. Hold on. Let me, um, just give me one moment. All right. While Lady Ada is uh, getting another cable thing here. Yeah, I think that's my bad. I had to move stuff around, folks, so while we're uh, waiting, well, admire the photos. Oh yeah, you don't have a cable? Everything, everything's been moved. Everything's we did a lot gone. of cleaning, but... Um, I think we're There's gonna. I think we're gonna stick with the photos then. Let me stick with the photos. All and right. um, actually, no, let me just go to go to the overhead so I can point out I things. Point out the back of it. Yeah. Apologies. I think I, I unplugged the uh, the USB yeah. cable. Okay. Um, okay. So whew, uh, I've got USB C uh, battery input, and you can see here's the STEM IQT port. Um, you can plug in vertical. Hold on. There you go. Um, you can plug in uh, vertically, so you can have I squared C um, sensors and expanders. Reset and reset and boot buttons. Color TFT display. It's all feather compatible. Of course, you wouldn't want to plug a feather um, on top of it, like a feather wing on top of it. But you could use a doubler, or you could stack this on top of 
I'm gonna try this other. Yeah. I think yeah. something. I think that power supply is dead because yeah, the power lines are. It's okay. It happens. Um, yeah, everything everything got shifted around here. Uh, and on the bottom, we've got um, an ESP32 um, S2 Mini with four megabytes of flash, two megabytes of PS RAM, um, all the passives. For monitoring the battery, there's an LC709203. Um, and that's a I2C ultra low power battery monitoring that does like um, voltage and not coulomb counting, but it like kind of tracks the voltage. You just tell it the capacity of the battery and it will automatically, um, it'll automatically tell you the percentage and um, voltage of the battery. So you can like track percentage and not have to do the, the math to convert like 3.7 volts to whatever. And there's also a second regulator. Um, the second regulator is used to um, uh, uh, disable power um, from the I squared C or TFT display. So you can do like ultra low power usage. Cause I think that could be, uh, you know, more people are trying to use our boards for low power. And I, I thought um, I had time with this one to, to, cause I had to redesign it doing, due to the um, component shortage. Um, so you can turn off the TFT power and the power to the I squared C port and get down to like 80 to 100 uh, micro amperes, which is about as low as you can get in deep sleep when using an ESP32 S2. Um, and still have like, you know, the regulator. And then of course in uh, a lighter sleep, like a sleep where you want to resume execution, I think it's about one milliamp. Um, so overall pretty um, full featured boards. This has like the most stuff. It's uh, double-sided. Um, so again, you know, you, you don't want to put a feather on top. I recommend like a doubler or something with this if you want to add um, more hardware. But this is also great for a breadboard because, let me go overhead. You can um, use it on a breadboard and have the TFT display um, and, um, you know, plug it in and it'll, the, the height of all the components on the bottom isn't higher than um, the header spacer. So that's kind of what I recommend it to be used for. Um, but otherwise it's basically just like a Feather ESP32 S2 with a high speed TFT that's display. And for CircuitPython, it's great because you'll have um, the REPL show up on the TFT when you plug it in. And that's new products. Thank <music> you.